Howdy. Today we're going to talk about the reciprocal lattice. And the reciprocal lattice is basically a thought construct um, that helps us interpret uh, uh, diffraction data. Um, and remember, uh, when we talk about real space, that's basically the spacing between one lattice point and another. So this is our lattice. We have two last parameters, A and B. Um, and for some family of planes, for example, the 1, 1 family of planes, we have a D spacing um, that separates one member of that family from another member of that family. Um, and these are all given in uh, units of distance. Reciprocal space, each point represents a family of planes. So this point here that's labeled 1, 1 represents the family of 1, 1 planes. There's only two indices because we're just looking at a two-dimensional lattice right now. Um, so the distance from the origin uh, to the point 1, 1 is given by 1 over the d spacing of the 1, 1 uh, family of planes. Similarly, if I think about the family of 1, 2 planes, you'll see that their d spacing is somewhat smaller. Uh, and so that means in reciprocal space, the distance from the origin to the 1, 2 point is proportional to 1 over the distance uh, 1, 2. And so that reciprocal space length is larger. Um, so basically, we're going to talk about how we construct reciprocal lattices and then how we use them at the end. Um, so hopefully it'll become clear uh, towards the end of this video. You might need to watch it a second time. Um, but again, the reciprocal lattice is basically a way to look at and interpret diffraction data. Okay, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to look at a real space lattice to the left, and we're going to build up a reciprocal lattice to the right. Uh, and we're going to do this step by step. Um, so we're going to start off by defining uh, an origin point, so 0, 0, 0 in the reciprocal lattice. Um, basically, we're looking down uh, lattice vector y. Uh, lattice vector x shoots off this way. Lattice vector z goes up. And so that means we have a non-90 degree beta angle. Um, which is great because this is a very general lattice. If you can do this one, uh, you can do any of them. Um, so first we're going to construct our uh, A star. And so A star is basically the principal lattice vector in the reciprocal lattice. And so it goes from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 0, 0. And we're going to um, have that vector. It's going to be given the length of 1 over the 1, 0, 0 d spacing. So remember, the, the d spacing of 1, 0, 0, it's not the same as length a. It's the perpendicular distance between one uh, of these planes and another of these planes. Um, so that d 1, 0, 0, uh, a star is uh, one uh, unit of length in a star is given by 1 over that distance. And the direction is going to be perpendicular to the 1, 0, 0 planes. So this vector here. It's perpendicular to those planes. That's the same direction as our A star reciprocal lattice vector. Okay. Um, so if I continue that further, I would have the 2, 0, 0 reciprocal lattice vector. It's in the same direction. The length, it's going to be twice this original length. And that makes sense because the 2, 0, 0 plane is basically a plane halfway in between the origin and 1, 0, 0. Remember how we index planes. If it's 2, 0, 0, that means it intercepts uh, along the x-axis uh, half of the way towards um, uh, of, of a single lattice vector. Uh, and so that is going to have half of the d-spacing distance, which means in reciprocal space, it's going to be twice the length. Um, so that's the nice thing about this reciprocal lattice. Once I've created one lattice vector, one of my reciprocal lattice vectors, then I can get to any other reciprocal last point um, just by looking at linear combinations of the vectors, just like I do in real space. Okay, what about 0, 0, 1? Um, so 0, 0, uh, 1 is basically going to have a d spacing that is 1 over the d spacing of 0, 0, 1. And also, it's going to be perpendicular to the 0, 0, 1 planes. So the 0, 0, 1 planes, it's, it's parallel to the x vector, and it intercepts the z vector at, at one unit. So this is the 0, 0, 1 family of planes. And that means uh, that c star, 
or zero uh, zero one um, reciprocal last point is going to be perpendicular to that family of planes. So it's it's on the direction direction shown by this vector here, uh, and again the distance is one over this d spacing. So just as before, if that's um, one d spacing, I could have two d spacings, three d spacings. Uh, these are all referring to planes that are um, closer and closer together because their reciprocal uh, spacing is getting further and further apart. And just like in a real space lattice, once I have my two principal lattice vectors, I can define any other point in reciprocal space. So for example, let's think about a point 101 on the reciprocal lattice. So that's a, a linear combination of 100 and 001. What does this point represent? Remember, every point in reciprocal space represents a family of planes, um, and the direction from the origin to that point is perpendicular to that family of planes, and the distance is proportional to 1 over the d spacing. Um, so the 101 planes would intercept at uh, A and at C, and the next member of that family of planes would be here. And so again, the direction that's perpendicular to that should be the same as the direction from the origin out to 1, 0, 0. Um, and from, again, from just my first two lattice vectors, I can construct the whole um, reciprocal lattice, where, again, each point represents a family of planes. Okay, now what's the big deal? Why bother? Um, and one thing that we use the reciprocal uh, lattice, uh, reciprocal space, to think about is to think about this interaction between the X-ray beam and a particular crystal orientation. So again, we're going to have our real space image over here. My X-ray beam comes in. Here's my crystal. Uh, so last direction, X and Y. Um, and a reciprocal lattice uh, is going to basically, its, its orientation will be determined by the orientation of the crystal. Um, so if I have my origin here, um, the 100 family of planes, that 100 uh, reciprocal last direction is perpendicular to the 100 family of planes that looks something like this. Um, so once I create my reciprocal lattice, I can then define a sphere that has a very particular diameter. And that diameter is, is 2 over the wavelength of the radiation. And the reason that I do this is that if I see um, that sphere intersect with a reciprocal lattice point, that's when the diffraction condition is met. So let's kind of uh, talk through this. So we put the origin on 0, 0, 0. Um, we have our reciprocal lattice here. The sphere, again, is, is given... Um, by a diameter of 2 over lambda. Um, and if we think about this angle here, if the diameter is 2 over lambda and the distance from the origin to some point on the lattice is given by 1 over the d spacing, um, th well, in that case, uh, the sine of theta equals uh, the uh, opposite over the hypotenuse, so sine of theta equals the opposite, the inverse of the d-spacing uh, over the hypotenuse, so times lambda over 2. And if I rearrange things, that brings me back to the standard Bragg's law. So if I bring the 2 and the d over, um, basically uh, it's Bragg's law for n equals 1. Lambda equals 2d sine of theta. So that means that Bragg's law is satisfied when a reciprocal lattice point sits on this sphere. And again, we call this sphere the Avald sphere. All the things were named after um, dead crystallographers. So uh, he was one of the original early crystallographers. Um, so let's think about what happens then if I start to rotate that crystal. Because remember, if I rotate the crystal, then that means I'm going to rotate my reciprocal lattice as well. And so I'm kind of going to spin through. This is where we're going. Let's back up. So here's my uh, original orientation. I'm going to start to rotate the crystal a little bit. Um, and as I keep rotating it at some point, at some orientation, um, this reciprocal lattice point is going to be on the Avald sphere. 
And so this tells us not only um, the angle, remember this angle is the two theta angle, um, but it also tells us the orientation of the crystal at which I will see that diffraction condition met. Um, and I could keep rotating and at some further uh, rotation, um, I see Bragg's law is satisfied um, for this reciprocal lattice point here. So everything we've done here, it's, it's a two dimensional version. It gets a little bit more complicated uh, when you're working in three dimensions because our circle becomes a sphere and our, um, our 2D lattice basically becomes a 3D lattice, but it follows all of the same laws and rules. Um, so that kind of applies when we're looking at single crystals. A lot of times material scientists look at um, either polycrystal materials or materials that are made up of a whole bunch of individual crystals that are just randomly oriented. Um, so that's what a, a powder is. A powder is basically a whole bunch of small crystals that maybe have, maybe they have some orientation or maybe they're totally random. Um, and so what that means is that there is usually some crystal that happens to be at just the right angle so that we can apply Bragg's law and see that intensity. Um, another way to say this is that um, when I have diffraction come out, instead of seeing um, an array of spots, we have rotated them randomly around the orientation of the incoming beam. Um, and so uh, instead of spots, I see diffraction rings. This is an actual diffraction um, spectra that's captured on an area de uh, detector. Um, and so the rings that I see, they're the intersection uh, of this diffraction cone and the surface of the detector. Um, generally, powder, or at least traditionally anyway, uh, has been collected with a powder diffraction system. And there we just have a point detector and we kind of move along here. Um, and when you're moving along this arc, you're picking up intensity when you cross each of these individual rings. And that intensity is associated with a particular uh, peak on the diffraction spectra. Um, an alternate way to look at that is to think about our reciprocal lattice and to say that um, when I have a uh, powder sample or a polycrystalline sample, this reciprocal lattice is basically, if you picture pinning it around the origin and rotating it every which way, every single reciprocal lattice point um, that you can imagine, um, at some point you can rotate it down and it can intersect uh, a single vector. And this single vector is basically collecting the D spacings for all of the different potential um, families of planes that could diffract. Um, so each of these points in the reciprocal lattice, again, represents a particular family of planes. If we picture rotating it and projecting it downwards onto our single vector, then this just gives us um, the relationship between uh, the overall D spacing, so the distance from the origin to that diffraction point, um, so that's the, the, uh, the distance, what's called D star, because remember that's an inverse length. Um, and it's relating it, again, back to Bragg's law. 1 over D equals 2 sine of theta over N lambda. Um, so power diffraction, one way to think about it is it's equivalent to mapping out all of our reciprocal lattice and then rotating it so every reciprocal lattice point at some point gets projected down onto a single vector.